What is up, App Nation? It is Steve P. Young, founder of AppMasters.com, the place you go when you want action-packed content in the app business. And today, I want to talk about app engagement. I know we've been talking a lot about growth through ASO, Apple features, different growth hacks, different Facebook marketing campaigns, but I really want to start talking more about engagement, which is key for retention and monetization because we've driven tremendous growth for clients and we've had clients change their business models because despite the tremendous growth, they haven't been able to build a sustainable app business. And to do that, you really need retention and monetization. So in this video, we're going to talk about five surefire ways to increase your app engagement. Number one, let's start with the big one that I've been focusing on lately and it's email marketing. Now there's two key email marketing sequences that I feel like you should have with any app. Number one is the welcome activation email sequence. So once a user signs up for your app, you want to send them a series of emails that teach them how to use the app, the benefits of it, social proof, and to get them to actually subscribe. Number two, worth exploring, especially if you've got an e-commerce type of app, is the cart abandonment email. Look, this is hugely popular in the online space. When you think about e-tailers such as Amazon, they know that you put something into a cart, maybe you left it, and they send you an email, hey, you still want this email. And I shared an example of how Hotel Tonight does this, where I favorited a hotel and they sent me an email and said, hey, are you still interested in this hotel? So it's a great way of targeting the behavior of your users within your app and using email to communicate and push them along that conversion funnel. Number two is a clear onboarding experience. Let's not assume that after a user downloads your app, they immediately remember what your app is all about. Sometimes we download apps and we don't open it until a few days later. So utilize the onboarding experience to tell them why your app is so cool, what made them download the app in the first place. And lastly, make sure that you have the pricing page during that onboarding experience. Now, the number one mistake that I see app developers make is they talk too much about the features and not about the benefits. So a feature would be, hey, get a car immediately with the push of a button and that's Uber. But the benefit is save time, right? That's all it's about. Save time, not looking for a taxi. You push a button and you save time. So that's the benefit. You talk about more about the benefits rather than all the features that you have. What will all those features allow the end user to do? and usually saving time, making more money, being more productive. Those are all benefits that we all want. For the last three, I'm going to go super fast because I think they're obvious a little bit, but they're still important to mention. So number three is regular updates. Really, really critical. If you think about any type of mobile games, you got to have new characters, new puzzles, new elements, new live ops to really engage your user. And if you've got a subscription based app, well, probably new content that you have to publish. So the more regular that you can update your app, the more it looks like to the end user to be like, okay, I want to stick around with this app. I know they're making a lot of new changes and they're working on this app. So I'm going to continue paying for this particular app. So hugely important if you got games or any subscription based apps. Number four, push notifications. Look, I know it's obvious, but it's the number one overlooked channel. It does work. The proper way to have people enable push notifications on Google play, it's already automatically enabled on iOS. We users have to enable it. So the right way is to tell them why it's important. Don't just do the default prompt. Tell them why it's important to have these push notifications. Now, one of the sneaky ways that Zinio actually did this was they asked for the push notification using a custom message. So when the user said no, they would just go away and not ask, but this allowed them the opportunity to ask again, right? So be careful when you're doing this, but it was a great insight that Marilla gave during our podcast interview. And I know Apple is a little bit like you shouldn't be doing this, 
but it's a very, very clever way of showing a custom image saying, hey, do you wanna be notified when new subscriptions are out? Yes or no? And if they hit yes, you show them the default iOS prompt. If they hit no, you go away and then maybe you ask them again later. Because once you show the default iOS prompt, they hit no on that, it's very, very difficult to get them to say yes again or ask them again. And lastly, number five, build a community. Look, a lot of social gaming and even subscription-based apps such as meditation, they're all moving towards this community aspect, especially during times like this with all the outbreaks that's happening right now. But community is a very, very important aspect of any game or mobile app. And I wanna point out a couple of different use cases here. A community does not always have to be one that's interactive right? It's great if I can talk to people and interact sort of like Fortnite, but you can also utilize it in various ways. So I'm going to point to an app in a client of ours called Unplug, a great meditation app, and they have comments below where you can engage with different community members. And what I started noticing was that we would all meditate around the same time because we'd all leave different comments and you could see the same people showing up. So there's a sense of community there that feels like, oh, this is great. There's more people and I'm seeing the same commenters and we're probably meditating around the same time. Another app that I love, and it's shout out to Kevin Rose who made this app, but it's called Zero. I use it because I do intermittent fasting. I tried an 18.6 and now I'm back to a 16.8. 18.6 is really, really hard and I was going crazy. But anyways, that's for another video. But if you look at their app, you'll notice that they have a huge amount of users and they say, look, these are the number of people fasting right now with you. So it's great to just see those numbers. It adds that social proof, but it also gives you a sense of community as well. So the ideal situation is for the community to be interactive and talk to each other. But if you can't do that, there's certain ways to add that community element through comments or just through numbers on how many people are doing X, Y, and Z to give it that community feel. All right, guys, that's it. Five surefire ways to increase your app engagement. Now, what we're doing in App Masters Academy, here's a plug that's coming up. If you wanna check out our App Masters Academy, you'll have access to everything that we do for our clients. What I'm starting to add more into is how we've helped our clients make more money. There's a case study that I'm working with one of my clients and we wanna give it more data. There's about two weeks worth of data. I wanna give it about three to four weeks if we can. And then I wanna share the insights that we've learned to increase revenue, subscription revenue for this client. And so we're gonna go really deep into app engagement, conversion, and app analytics and the, the important elements of a really successful app business, the building blocks of a successful app business. Within the academy right now, it's a lot of growth elements, but I really wanna talk more about the conversion rate optimization and retention as well. So if you're interested in learning more, go check out appmastersacademy.com, appmastersacademy.com. You can pay full price for it, or there's a payment plan as well for those who can't afford to pay upfront right there. And what we're doing is having monthly check-in calls, especially with the coronavirus being where it's at right now. I think it's critical that we all get together and we still have a social element, even though we can't interact in person. So we meet every month and just talk about what's working, what we're struggling with, and how we can help each other as well. I'm going to try to do more YouTube lives as I have a little bit more time and I can't go out and do other things. And so hopefully you'll see me do that as well to answer any of your guys' question. All right, guys, until next time, make sure you hit subscribe and make sure you like this video. And if you got anything out of this, make sure you share it and tag me on social media. It's pretty easy at Steve P. Young. Until next time, be kind to everyone, please. I'll see you on the next video.